Today, we're gonna learn 10 effects to level up your music video in After Effects. How is it going, guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that wanna shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Yo, it's Herman here on the Olufemi channel. And if you're just scratching your head wondering why your music video is looking a little bit bland, lacking style, or just not looking as cool as your favorite artist, it could be the lack of budget, but it could also be a lack of dope effects. So don't worry, I got you. I spent 14 months creating an AI program that analyzed every music video in existence to collect 10 of the sickest effects that'll make your video look fresh. Okay, that didn't happen yet. I swear it'll happen one day. Until then, let's launch After Effects and get started. All right, let's kick things off with the first effect, which is a really popular one you'll see a lot in music videos. And all you're doing is retiming the clip. So let me show you how you could do that in After Effects. In this case, I already have a composition set up and I have a clip over here of these two dancing over here. And I got these from uh, Envato Elements. Now, when I play it through, you can see that this footage is shot in slow mo, which I think will give it the most dramatic effect when you're using speed rounds because you can use that so you can slow down certain moments and give it that more like dramatic effect for that specific moment. So in this case, when they're dancing, let's say like when he's down over here, here. This is when I want it to slow mo, and then I just want it to be a little faster until around here, and then it'll slow mo again, and then it'll just be a little bit faster. So you can kind of like scrub through and you can almost like mock the speed ramp before you decide where are good times to actually do that. And when you decide when you want it to be faster and slower, then all you have to do is right click the clip, go into time, and then go into enable time remapping. And then you got this going on over here with a stopwatch that's blue already. Basically, it's ready to keyframe. And what you got to do is just hit this add keyframe button over here. And let's say that during this moment over here, I want it to be a little bit faster all the way until here. So I'm going to hit another keyframe and basically you're just setting points in the time and the duration of the clip and then you'll be manipulating it later. Sounds a little wordy and confusing. So let me just show you. So you continue remapping. So let's say I want it to be, you know, normal speed until around here. Hit the keyframe button and then over here as well. Just want to add another point, another point over here and then a little bit faster over here and then it slows down and then a little bit faster like that. Okay, so this is the full duration of the clip where I added some keyframes and here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna highlight everything over here and basically the time in between this keyframe and this keyframe, I want it to be faster. So basically you're shortening the length. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to drag all these keyframes over to the left like this. And then as you can see, because the duration over here is shorter, it means that it will happen faster. So when I play it through just like that, so much faster. And as you can see, the moments from this keyframe to this keyframe, nothing has happened. It's still slow motion. And that's because I haven't squished the duration or anything like that. And I want to keep it that way, but I want to just uh, make this part a little bit faster. So that time in between, I'm just going to squish that space by highlighting all of the keyframes over here and then just bring it a little bit closer. And as you can see, it'll be faster, slower, and then faster and then slower. So play it back just like that. And then during this moment, it'll just stay slow, but around over here, I'll make it a little bit shorter, meaning it will be faster and then it's slow-mo again. And that's a really basic way to time remap your clip in After Effects, but a quick little tip is if you want to smoothen out that slow-mo and speed ramp, you can use the speed graph editor and all you have to do is highlight all these clips, hit F9, and then we can select one of the keyframes like that so it's blue, go to the graph editor over here, and then you can start manipulating uh, some of this over here. And as you can see, you see these points on a graph and right now I have it set so that I can see the edit value graph. So you just gotta hit this button over here and make sure that this is checked off, edit value graph and then as you can see there are some handles over here right and when you click on the keyframes these handles appear and as you can see basically it goes faster and it's going higher like that and then it slows down like this and then it goes higher because it's faster and then it slows down so what you can do is instead of these sharp kind of like angles you can take these handles and you can smooth out the motion so that there's a nice gradual ramp up like this so i'm just shifting around the handles like this so it's a little bit more smooth like a smooth slope it's like imagine that you're snowboarding down this slope and you've never snowboard before so you want to make sure that there aren't any sudden surprises like this don't know if that's the best analogy but i think you guys get it and when i exit out of the speed graph editor as you can see when i play it back it's a little bit smoother and there you guys have it and it's a nice way to also transition from one shot to another so let's say that it speed ramps faster and then the next clip it starts fast and then slows down which is a dynamic way to change from scene to scene next up we have the effect where the lyrics will appear behind the artist and i think it's it's a really interactive way to highlight like a certain moment of the song but instead of slapping some text on the screen like it's a really cheap lyric video animating it and putting it behind the artist or an object will make it feel like there's a sense of depth and this was inspired by the onomatopoeias that would appear
here in the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and I thought that was super dope, so I thought, oh, why don't I just incorporate that in music videos, especially when there are lyrics involved, so here we go. In this case, I have a composition already with a clip where there's this man who's rapping, or maybe he's not actually rapping, maybe he's just making like, ooh, ooh, ah, sounds. I don't, I don't know, the sound is off. But in order to have the lyrics behind the artist, what you have to do is first cut out the artist or the object. So in this case, we're gonna duplicate the layer by highlighting the layer, hitting Control D, because that's the shortcut to duplicate a layer, and we're going to cut this out. You can cut this out with your favorite method in After Effects, but I think that the best way to achieve the cleanest result is to use the Roto Brush. And when I'm using After Effects 2022, we now have Roto Brush 2.0, which will give a super squeaky clean result. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So basically, we're gonna go to the Roto Brush tool over here. I'm gonna click that once and when I double click that top clip over here just like that it'll bring the source monitor so I have this to work with now so this is not the composition window anymore this is the source footage uh, layer window and right now I have this kind of green crosshair but that means that the brush is not big enough so all you have to do is just hit control and then left click with a mouse and hold it down while you are dragging and you kind of change the size of the brush so in this case this will be good enough and basically I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip over here and I'm going to highlight around the artist like this. And everything that's green will be adding selection. So in this case, I am, you know, making sure that it cuts out the artist. And for areas like this, where it's like the brick wall in the background, I can hold Alt. And then I have this minus brush, which, you know, turns red. And then I can just minus the areas that I don't want to include. So I just got to do that for this frame first. And this is pretty good. And now I'm going to hit the shortcut Alt W, which will switch over to the Refine Edge uh, brush. And you can do that over here with the toolbar as well. Right now it's the Refine Edge tool, but if I were to left click it and hold down, as you can see, the Roto Brush tool uh, appears over here. But right now I want to keep it at the Refine Edge. And oh, I just totally missed his glasses. And that's why I like shortcuts. I can just quickly draw this in and then go back to the Refine Edge tool. And as the name implies, it's going to refine the edge of your selection. So I'm just going to, you know, paint over the edge like this so after effects will do its wonderful magic and just do a really dope job like as you can see the white is basically what's being kept in so it's like a mat and then the black is everything that is uh, being subtracted so we're just going to do that for the entire edge just like that if i zoom out this does a really good job and i have these different views that i can toggle and i can see you know the result of the brush. So if I click that, now everything that is subtracted will be red. So as you can see, this is a really clean job. This is really impressive, actually. I don't know what kind of magic After Effects is using. It's, okay, it's not it's not magic, it's science, but it feels like magic. And right now it'll give me this where it tells me that I want to set it to full resolution if I want the best result, which is true. And in this case, because I'm, you know, I have ultra HD footage, I'm, I'm okay with half resolution so that I don't set my computer on fire. And then we got this bar over here, which I will have it set to the same start point is that and I'm going to go frame by frame to see how well of a job it will do. So I can go back to this over here and as you can see it starts chopping off his arm on the next frame. So if I go down like this. So all I have to do is just add that portion that I want to add because I don't want him to feel like he just lost his hand midway through. So we'll go back to the Roto brush tool and just add that in and then boom just like that his hand is back and then over here I can refine the edge like that and then hit page down so I can go into the next frame. As you can see, more of the hand is gone. And the reason is because the hand is moving around, so there's some motion blur, so it's having a hard time keeping up. But with just a simple couple clicks each frame, you can see that it easily adds it back in like this. And you just have to do that for the entire duration of the clip, just checking it and letting that frame propagate, going frame by frame. Or you can just you know jump all the way ahead and then it'll load up uh, all the way to that point. And as you can see the green progress bar, you can see the progress of all the work that it's doing and this is pretty good all i have to do really is just add that hand back in and then once you're happy with everything you can just hit freeze and it'll freeze everything within this gray bar over here so this is what it looks like after spending a little more time on it and then hitting the freeze button and don't worry if you're scrubbing this through and playing it back and you notice some weird stuff like his hand is missing you didn't catch it earlier and you're panicking don't worry all you have to do is hit that freeze button again and it will unfreeze and then you can start making those changes and then you hit the freeze button and then you're good. But I'm going to go back to the composition window over here. And as you can see, it looks like nothing has happened. And that's because this top layer is the cutout layer, but the background layer is still showing the background and everything that is included. So I'm going to rename that top one by right clicking over here, hitting rename, or I can just hit enter while I have the layer highlighted. And I'll just be like, 
I'll just name it Roto. And then if I were to hide the visibility of the one in the back over here, as you can see, it's the lovely little cutout on black. And basically, we're going to sandwich the text or the lyrics in between those two layers. So it feels like it is, you know, between the artist and the background. But in this case, I'm just going to go to the horizontal type tool and I'm just going to write something like, I don't know, dope lyrics. Make it all big and caps. And then we're just going to, as I said, sandwich it in between the two layers. So I'm going to take this layer, put it in between those two and boom, instantly it looks like it is behind the artist. And this will just play through like that. And you can always change the blending mode of the text so that it feels like it's a little more part of the scene. So instead of normal over here, and you just go to the mode column over here, and instead of normal, you can do something like, I don't know, soft light like that. And that'll be blended a little bit better. Now, if you don't have the time and energy to animate text because you know, you're working on this music video so hard already and you don't want to spend like so much more time on it, then don't worry, In Vital Elements has got you. So over here, you got a variety of stock assets so you got stock video, video templates, music, sound effects, like it's an entire library, it's crazy. So that includes things like kinetic typography. So you can write like kinetic uh, typography. And you can choose something that looks appropriate that can act as lyrics that you can put behind your artist. So in this case, I found this one, which is super dope. There's a nice variety of kinetic animations and typography that you can use. And I can see myself using um, maybe, oh my God, I can't, I can't choose. There's so many, but it's an After Effects template. So all I have to do is just switch the words around so that it matches the lyrics of the music video that I'm working with and just render it out and then slap it in between the artist in the background. So after I've done that, which in this case looks like this, I chose this animation out of the template. And these are the lyrics. And we're just going to go back to the composition over here and we'll drag it in between like this. We'll delete that text layer because we don't need that anymore. And we'll change the blending mode to something like soft light, as I said before. And when we play it back, this is what it looks like. Damn, that is dynamic. Holy, I did not expect it to look so good, actually. <laughs> I love like the flashiness of the text swirling around like that. And I think the colors of the blue and the red and the yellow over here just gives it a bit of like a more playful and groovy look. People don't say groovy anymore. What's going on? Next up, we have the wiggle effect. Sorry, I had a lot of caffeine. And it's just a great way to add energy to your shot. And there's just a variety of ways that you can use it. I'm gonna show you three different ways. The first way is to basically highlight a very impactful moment in your shot. So in this case, I've got this guitarist who does that little little motion over here, like boom, right? And you wanna highlight that moment. So you can use the wiggle effect to do that. So it feels like the energy radiates in the scene. I gotta find better ways to describe things. I don't even have to describe it, I'll just show you. So highlight the layer and we're gonna bring up an effect. Now in this case, I'm gonna use a plugin called Effects Console, which I always, always bring up in every tutorial and it's by Video Copilot and it just saves me some time from bringing the effects from going to the effects and presets panel over here and I can just type it in over here. In this case, I'm typing in wiggle and I want wiggle position like this. Okay, so by default, it'll be set to one and 50 over here in the wiggle position. But in this case, I'm gonna go to zero and zero. And we're just gonna time it. So the moment that he strums down like that, I'm just gonna go a little bit before that. And then I'm gonna hit the stopwatch over here. And then I'm gonna hit U on the layer. And it'll bring up these keyframes because you will reveal all the keyframes in your layer. So right now, as you can see, the parameters over here is zero, but the moment he strums down, we're going to set it so that the wiggle speed is something like 50 and we'll do the wiggle amount like 15 like that. So now when he strums down, it like wiggles around, right? Uh, we can even adjust this around so that it's a little more aggressive. So instead of 15, we can do 25 and then let's say it goes back down to zero and zero so we can just type that in over here and as you can see it starts off at zero and then when he strums down it wiggles and it goes back to zero now i feel like it could be even more aggressive 50 and 25 these are amateur numbers i want something that'll really be impactful so let's go 40 and let's go 100 and let's see how that looks boom oh man i feel the impact and you might be worried about these black edges uh that are showing because it is wiggling position meaning it, I, I can see behind this frame now and a simple fix is to just you know rescale it by hitting s and bringing it up but if you're worried about losing the quality then don't worry a simple fix is to add another effect called motion tile so that's the second one over here and we're going to place that on top of the wiggle and just change the output width and height to something like i don't know 150 whatever that will cover the black edges and then we'll hit mirror edges and just like that it'll fill in those edges by mirroring what's over here which is why we click that and when i play it through boom we got that lovely wiggle effect without those 
ugly black frames. And although I'm loving the look of this and I can really feel the impact of that strum on the guitar, if you want to try a variation of the look, all you have to do is just add some motion blur to it by hitting this over here and then making sure that this is blue so that motion blur is on. And it just gives a variation to the look. So you can pick and choose and see what's appropriate for you. And that's one way to use the wiggle effect. Let me show you another one. Another one. Sorry, DJ Cal, please don't sue me. So I'm going to hit you. So I bring up these keyframes and I'm just going to delete all these keyframes so I can start from scratch. I'll also disable motion blur over here like that. And let's say that, you know, your shot is not very dynamic and you want it to feel like it's more high energy. Right now it's a stabilized shot of a stabilizer pulling the camera backwards like that, but maybe you want to go for a more handheld feel. So it feels like more in the moment. So an easy way to do that is to just, you know, do the wiggle speed to something like 20, do the wiggle amount to something like 50. And then now you have this fake, oh my God, then that's earthquake level. Let's change it to something like five and 20 tone back the aggressiveness. And now it'll feel like someone is kind of just taking a camera and walking with the artist as opposed to like being on a stabilizer. And you can apply this to tripod shots, for example, so that it feels more raw and in the moment. In this case, I'll show you a before and after. So before the effects, if I just play that, it's really smooth and sterile. But if I enable these wiggle effects, it's just a very subtle kind of like handheld shaky movement. And the last way to use wiggle is to just have like a very small wiggle that'll happen constantly. So it feels like it's building intensity and tension. So let me show you how you can do that. So let's say that I wanted to kind of build up all the way to the moment before he strums like that. And we will hit the stopwatch. So we have zero and zero. We'll go a couple frames like over back over here and we'll do something pretty crazy in terms of the speed. We'll go something like 150 and the wiggle amount to like 20 and then we want it to kind of ramp up to that speed. So we'll start at zero and zero. So I can see it's zero and zero gradually gets more intense. And then once he strums, boom, back to zero. It's like a weird peace of mind the moment when that happens. Now, this effect is really subtle, especially when there's already camera movement, but this is a lot more effective when you're using a more locked on kind of like tripod shot. And it makes it feel like the artist has some like chaotic thoughts before something brings him a peace of mind. So that is another way to use the wiggle effect. Very versatile tool that I hope you enjoy using. Next up, we've got the punch zoom effect. Now you'll see this a lot in K-pop music videos to add that sense of dynamic and energy especially during dance sequences. So in this case, I'm using some footage of a guy dancing like this. And it's so simple to do in such a simple way to add variety to your shots. So let me show you. All you have to do is hit S and then hold shift and hit P and I'll bring up the position and scale. And these are the two parameters that we'll be playing with right now. If I play through the shot, it's just this guy break dancing, field himself. Wish I could dance like that. But let's say that during this moment over here, we're just going to hit the stopwatch for both the position and scale. So we can add some keyframes over here. And then we just want to highlight his face or something like that. And we just go to something like 200 like that and just center him. So it feels like he is the center of the world. Let's go 250 actually. So we're even closer like that. So if I play it through, this is what it looks like, but I can always bring these a little bit closer so that happens a little bit faster. And if you watch any of my other tutorials, you'll know how much I love easy easing things so it feels less jerky and robotic and sharp like this. So I'm just going to highlight the keyframes like so. So they're all blue. Hit F9 and then I'm going to play it back and it's just a little bit smoother. So let's say from this moment over here, we want to jump back out and punch zoom out. So all we have to do is add some keyframes over here. I can either copy these ones over here or I can just hit these two diamonds over here to add these keyframes and then go back to what it was before, which were these. So I'm going to highlight that, hit control C and hit control V. So it jumps back out like this. And then when I play it back, zoom in, zoom out. And then let's say that during this step over here, I want to follow this foot for whatever reason. So it feels like the camera is kind of almost like dancing with the dancer. So over here, we'll copy these keyframes instead of always going all the way over here to add keyframes and adjust the parameters. And then we're going to go all the way in, not to his crotch. Oh my God, we're not making that kind of video. And as you can see, when I do this, I might see some black frame if I want to like center this foot a little more like that. So I can always use that effect that I used before for the wiggle section and it is called motion tile. I'm going to bring that up, motion tile. And all that does is just repeat the edges so there's not this black box and it'll fill it in really nicely. So pop quiz time, what are the parameters that we want to play with? This is just an excuse for me to think because I actually don't remember. No, I'm just kidding. I totally remember. We do something like 150 over here for output width, output height as well. Go to mirror edges and boom, filled in. And especially for things like this where it's concrete, it just looks like it's part of the scene. And then let's say over here, I want to follow the foot over here. So all I'm going to do is 
copy these keyframes over here so there's no movement over here in between until the moment this foot lands over here just like that and then from over here we'll add a keyframe for the scale right and then we'll go all the way back to the normal wide shot so from over here I'm just going to copy and paste this so there is no movement. The camera kind of stays there for a little moment. And then I want to zoom all the way back out to the wide shot, which was this starting position over here. So I'll just copy these keyframes by hitting control C after highlighting them and then hitting control V at this final position and then we'll zoom out. So let's bring it all the way back and hit that spacebar button to see the results of our work. Boom into his face, boom to his shoe, to his other foot. And then it zooms back up. So this is a great way to highlight key moments. As you can see, we just see like Dancer's face. He's really enjoying himself. You see his foot, you see his other foot, and we just feel like we're dancing with him. And especially K-pop music videos where they're doing a dance sequence, as I mentioned before, it's actually a great way for you to stitch two different takes together. So if they're shot in the same scene, and let's say like the dancer messes up or the rapper messes up, but you want to jump to the other take and you don't want it to be like a simple jump cut, then you can hide it in this punch zoom. But there's so many ways that you can use this, but this is just one simple application and very easy to do all you're doing is keyframing the scale and the position next we got the strobe effect which you'll see so much in hip-hop music videos but usually it's done practically on set but in this case let's say you're handed the footage and there's no strobe the producer's like you can do that in post right and then you just smile awkwardly and say of course and if you're lying to them then good thing you're watching this tutorial because you can actually kind of simulate it in post it's not going to look as good as the real thing but it'll still make the scene feel a little more dynamic so in this case i've got a composition with two clips one of this kid playing guitar in his bedroom with these red lights and this guitarist the one that we used before with blue lights the reason is because i want to show you an application where you can use this as possibly a transition so instead of having it constantly throughout the entire shot you can also just have it happen during a transition but i'll show you both ways all you have to do is really easy you just right click like go to new create a new adjustment layer and then we'll rename this to something like strobe and all we're doing is adding one effect we're going to hit control space bar which brings up the effects console plugin and we'll go to curves like this and all we're doing is just adjusting the brightness so if i go to the effects control panel over here and then have this curves effects all i got to do is just bring this up like this and then bring it down like that and if i hide this this is before this is after before after so it's a little bit writer like that and now we're gonna play with expressions expressions can seem a little intimidating because it's kind of like coding and i know nothing about coding so that's why i don't like expressions but i think it's the most effective way to do the strobe effect so we're gonna hit t to bring up the opacity we're gonna hold down alt while holding down the alt key we're gonna hit that stopwatch and now this becomes red and we're going to replace the words on this box and then we'll write something like wiggle like that and then we'll go left parentheses and we'll go i don't know let's do like a hundred comma 500 right parentheses to close this and then we'll click away and then now it'll wiggle the opacity parameter so if i play this it gives a strobe effect super simple way to add some strobe effect to your shots and as i mentioned before if i were to just use it as a transition for example then i can trim the clip by hitting alt left bracket and then going to the point where I want it to stop. So this time I will close off the right side by hitting Alt, right bracket. And then when I play this back, it's like boom, like that. But I don't like how this bright part kind of hung there. So I can always change the numbers and values over here to give me a different look. Let's say like I want it to be a little more aggressive. I just, oh, maybe not 1,150, maybe just 150 and 700. And then now I've got something like this. So it's almost like it's transitioning from when he was a kid and then now he's playing as an adult and it shows that his love of guitars has stood the test of time. It's fun to put in narratives sometimes, even if they don't call for it. Next up, we got one of my most favorite effects, the echo effect. Oh my God, you guys are gonna love this one if you don't know it already. Now it's such a trippy effect that gives that psychedelic feel. It makes it feel like the artist is disoriented or he's doing that thing that you tell kids not to do because it's bad for you. That's right, eating ice cream for breakfast. So in this case, we have a composition where it's the same artist as what we have before because we're Going to use some of the previous work that we've done since you already know how to use the roto brush now in this case we have a composition with the same shots as before with this artist over here so we have this layer right this is the original footage oh when you scrub it like this it's kind of fun okay let's stop and then we've got this roto layer which is the cutout of the artist and what we'll do is add one effect one effect only and it's called the echo effect 
And just like that, we have something like this. And why is he glowing? He's so bright. The reason is because the echo operator is set to add right now. So we're going to change that to something like maximum like this. And this isn't all we're doing. We're going to also play with these parameters over here. Number of echoes instead of just one. We want something crazy. We want something like eight. And we want to change the decay to instead of one, maybe something like 0.7. And that just means that the echoes will kind of fade gradually. So if I play it back, you can see that it's pretty crazy right now, but it's not a really like clean look for the artist. So what we'll do is we're going to duplicate this roto layer by highlighting it just like this. I'm going to hit control D. So we have this extra layer and we're going to delete the echo effect. So we still have that clean cutout of the artist on top. And then now he has an echo behind him. And if we play this back, this is what it looks like. As you can see, there's this echo trail behind the artist, which is super dope. And I think, yeah, you guys are going to have a lot of fun using this effect. Next effect that you can add to your music videos are lens flares. Now, ideally on the shoot, you slap on an anamorphic lens onto your camera and you get some sick flares like that. But anamorphic lenses cost an arm and a leg. But you know what doesn't? A subscription to Envato Elements. So let's bring that up and go to something like lens flares. And just like that, you got this variety of lens flares that you can choose from, from stock videos, Let's go to the stock video section and see more. Oh my God, 31 anamorphic lens flares in 4K. How do you resist? As you can see, you can download as many lens flares as you like, and you can use that promo link below so that you can get your first month for a much cheaper price. So I recommend checking that out. Now, in this case, I've already imported the lens flare from that pack that I downloaded it, and ooh, that is beautiful. So adding lens flares is that secret to like adding a bit of polish to your shots. And all you have to do is just go to your composition over here. In this case, we got this wrapper wrapping again, and we're going to take this, place it on top, and then we're going to change the blending mode to screen. And we can just kind of retime that a little bit and then check this out. I'm going to play it back. And just like that, it looks so much more dope. And I think because this is shot outside and super bright as well, it just feels like it's kind of justified, especially over here. And you don't have to just use like slow lens flares and light leaks like this. There are a variety of lens flares that you can use and overlay, you know, more stroby effects for your more high energy projects. But that is another effect for you to take away with. Now this one, I like to call the displacement burst. And basically we're using a displacement map to add some impact to a specific moment. So in this case, we're going to use the same guitarist and the moment that he strums, let's say that we want the background and everything to just kind of like go crazy. So what we first want to do is I'm going to just actually Actually hide this footage so we don't see this because we're going to hit control Y and create a new solid. So I'm going to write something like ripple and we're going to take the shape tool over here. I'm going to hold it down and then go to the ellipse tool and we're going to draw a circle. So with this layer highlighted, I'm going to hit shift and then I'm going to drag the cursor. So I have this circle. I'm just going to move it so it's somewhere around the center and then I'm going to hit alt apostrophe so that I bring up these grids and make sure that it's dead center. And then I'm going to actually just, you know, go crazy and expand it so that it fills up all the way over here and then make sure this is nice and aligned so it's really in the center and then I'm going to hit M and that'll bring up the mass path. I'm going to hit the stopwatch over here because I want a keyframe so that the circle will be really small and then go really big. So I'm hit that stopwatch and this is the really big position. So I'm going to go to the earlier section over here and then I'm going to double click this mask and then I'm just going to hold shift while I drag the corner. So I make it really, really, really small, like Ant-Man level small. And we'll bring it all the way over here, just like that. So if I zoom out all the way like this and I hit play, this is what it looks like. And let's get rid of those grids by hitting alt apostrophe again. Now I'm going to duplicate this mask by clicking it and then hitting control D to duplicate. And then now I have mask number two. We're going to hit the arrow over here so we can see the keyframes for the mask path. I'm going to highlight these keyframes over here and then we're going to offset them by about two frames and we'll change the mode to subtract instead of add. And basically this will cut out the circle. So if I play it back, now there's this uh, kind of like an outline of the circle and I can play around these keyframes to give myself a different look so it starts off a little bit thicker like this maybe if i move that keyframe so it's even thicker and then it kind of thins out as it ripples out now once you're happy with this animation we'll click this layer hit Control shift c which will pre-compose your layer and we'll just call this ripple animation make sure that we move all the attributes into the new composition hit ok and then now we have this pre-comp over here and then we're going to create a new adjustment layer by right clicking an empty spot over here go to new and adjustment layer right click it rename and go to displacement map and then now we're going to add an effect one single effect called displacement map that's why we named it that so the control spacebar to bring up effects console type it in 
And then now we want to go to the effects control panel over here. And as you can see, displacement map layer, we're going to change that by clicking that and going to ripple animation. We're going to take that animation to do the ripple effect. And by default, the use for horizon displace over here right now is red and vertical is green right now. But instead of red and green, we want it to be luminance because we want the brighter parts to be what will be rippling. So we'll change that so that it's luminance for both of them like this. And we'll go something like 30 for both the horizontal and vertical displacement. And then we're going to hide this ripple animation. And then now we can finally turn on that live footage and see the results of our work just like this. Now there's a bit of a ripple happening over here right now, but it's not where we want it to happen. So we're going to take these two layers. We're just going to move it. So it's timed to the moment where he strums down like this, just like that. And then if I play it through, boom, there's like a ripple effect that happens. And just like before, if you're afraid of seeing these black edges that are happening because it's basically displacing the areas that are white in your animation over here, that's why there's this cutout of like the circle, as you can see. What we can do is add that same effect that we usually do when we want to not have those ugly black edges showing. And that's by adding the motion tile and we mirror the edges and boom, problem is solved. Just like that, we got that nice little ripple. Now let's say you don't want these hard edges happening over here. Then all you have to do is soften that mask. So we're gonna go back to the ripple animation and then click that and we're gonna hit F, which will bring the mask feather option over here. And then we can soften these edges by just changing it to something like, I don't know, 70-ish, just like that. And then when I go back over here, now it's a smoother displacement if I play this back. Boom, no more hard edges. And it almost feels like you can hear the guitar with your eyes. Just me? Okay, never mind. Next up, we got the chromatic aberration effect. And you'll see this a lot more on later music videos where they accept and embrace the glitchy tone to it, especially when everything's being viewed on a computer screen, on your phone, everything's so like digital. And let's learn how you can do that so that we kind of have the split effect happening around the artist, but the artist himself will still be kind of clean. So it feels like the edges are slightly out of focus and it brings the attention to the middle. And enough talking, let me just show you. Now we're gonna use the same footage over here of this guy rapping. We're gonna highlight the footage. We're gonna hit Control D twice. So we have three of these layers. Now we're gonna apply an effect to one of these layers called Shift Channels, like that. Go to the Effects and Presets panel. And over here, we're gonna take the red from red take the green from off and then blue from off. So it will make it red. Now, right now you can't see because there's these other layers on top hiding it, but we're going to hit control C while highlighting this effect. And we're gonna go to the next layer on top over here and hit control V. So we have an effect on this layer, but instead of red from red, we're gonna change that to full off and we're gonna take the green from green just over here. And we're gonna to go to the final layer on top, hit control V. And then this time we're going to also make that full off and then blue from. So now we have a blue layer we have a green layer and we have a red layer. So if I turn this all back on, now we're gonna highlight all of them by hitting Control A, which will select everything over here. We will go to the modes column over here and change it to screen. And then now, boom, looks like nothing has happened, but we did a lot of work, so it's gotta pay off somehow, right? And all you gotta do is add one more effect. We're gonna go to one of these layers, let's say the bottom one over here, and we're going to go to optic compensation, just like that. And then now we're going to check the reverse lens distortion over here before we do anything. And we're gonna play with this value over here, the field of view, instead of zero, we're going to change that so it's something like this. And as you can see, around the edges over here, it starts splitting. I'm just gonna raise the quality to half like this. As you can see, if I shift this value around, it starts splitting more and more, and it's only happening along the edges. So it's kind of like stretching the edges sort of. In the middle, it's a lot less noticeable. So as you can see over here, absolutely no RGB split. Also no RGB split until around over here, closer to the edge of frame, we start seeing that little uh, edge split like that. Depending on how aggressive you want it to be, you can just bump this number a lot higher. And you can also copy and paste this effect to something else like the second layer over here for a more dramatic RGB split. And you can make this one even more aggressive. And then now you have something like this to add some style to your shots. And now we move on to the final effect, which is the lock on effect. And this is a great way to basically make it feel like the artist is the center of attention. Now, in this case, I'm using a different portion of the same footage of this artist. And let's say that I want to lock onto his face so that everything moves around his face and this is always the center of the frame. So what we have to do is track the face. Now, most tutorials that you see for this effect, they're gonna use the inbuilt tracker in After Effects. But personally, I don't like using After Effects tracker. I actually like using Mocha. I feel like that gives better results. So let's use that instead. Let's do it Herman style. So we're going to highlight the layer and we're gonna add the effect called Mocha, like this, Mocha AE. 
and we're going to go to the effects control panel over here and click that big shiny mocha button and wait for it to load like this so we're going to go to the beginning over here and then holding down z while i am clicking and dragging left clicking and dragging like this you can zoom in and then with the middle mouse while i hold that i can drag it around like that and we're going to create a spline around his face and we're going to go to this pen tool with the x over here once we click that we're going to draw over his face like this because this is what we're going to track okay and then all i have to do now is click the track forward button and by the way if you don't see stuff like this when you're opening uh, mocha ae for the first time then it could be because your view is not set to classic maybe it's like this usually it's essentials by default so you just got to make sure that you hit classic and you'll see all these lovely buttons and although there are a lot of buttons we're only paying attention to this one over here which is track forward and then as the name implies it's going to track forward and it's going to do its really best to stick onto the face and as you can see it's doing a really good job and just like that it's done if i just kind of zoom out you can see that if i scrub through boom it is tracking onto that face when i hit Control s and then we're going to close if we don't hit Control s it's not going to save all the work that you did in mocha so be sure that you do that and if we go back to the effect over here we're going to go to tracking data when we click that arrow we see all this stuff and we're going to bring all that data we did in mocha into ae by hitting this create track data and then there's going to be this layer control window and there's only one layer that we were working with in mocha that we tracked so once that's highlighted we hit okay and then now we have that data over here so you can see those trackers but we have not done the actual effect yet what we'll do now is hit this, which is the invert checkbox. Make sure that you click this for this effect to work. Once we click that, we're now going to go to the export options and instead of corner pin by default, we're gonna change it to transform. And then the layer export, we're basically going to export all this transform data of tracking around the face over to this layer. Did that make sense? Well, you're about to see what's gonna happen. If I change the layer export to this one layer over here, now we're going to hit apply export and watch what happens. Boom. It's a close up of the brick wall. Unless I zoom out and just like that, it stabilizes around the artist's face. And as you can see, he's like all the way to the right over here. So I want to move him over to the center. But normally if I do that, if I hit P to bring up the position, uh, there's a bunch of this data already applied from the stabilization that we did and apply export. Like we, we did through all this mumble jumbo and then now there's all these keyframes so we can't move it. So what we're gonna do is create a null object and that's gonna help us move this clip. And what I mean by that is I'm going to right click an empty spot over here, go to new, go to null object. And then now I'm going to parent this clip over to the null object by hitting this parent pick whip. I'm gonna left click it, hold it down, drag it over to the null object and let go just like this. And I can, you know, hit enter and hit something like position and scale control and rename it like that. And now what's gonna happen is whatever happens to this null object, it will affect this footage over here. And in this case, we wanna play with the position, which I hit P for and shift S, which will bring up both the scale and keep the position over here. And then we're going to just you know, move the position just like that and drag the parameters or I can just hold on to this and do that. And if I want to make sure the artist is actually centered, I can use the help of grids, which shortcut is alt apostrophe like this. And if I go to the beginning, I can kind of align this so the glasses are around over here along this line and he's around the center like that. As you can see, it does a pretty good job. Now, there are some points where it is going off the center and you can just manually keyframe that as you normally would when you are keyframing the position. Now, as usual, if we don't like these black edges, then what you can do is always either scale in or you can use the effect motion tile and see what result that gives you. And then in this case, I'm going to click this layer over here. I'm gonna add in motion tile. And just like before, we'll change the output width and the output height to something else. Hit mirror edges and then now, Let's play it back. And because this shot is moving around so much, you don't really notice the repeat edges very much since that's not the focus of the attention. We're just looking at the artist in the center and you can always, as I said before, you can just kind of like rescale this. So it's kind of like that. And then you can move that around if that kind of bothers you and you want to show less of the edges. And that guys is how you do the locked on effect. There you guys have it, 10 music video effects to make your next project a little more flashy. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite effect is. Make sure to subscribe to the Olufemi channel so that you don't miss the next video from the other talented creators here. Hitting that bell notification will help as well. If you wanna check out what I'm personally up to, you can check out my YouTube and my Instagram. The handles are right there below. Otherwise, again, my name is Herman and I'll see you guys in the next one.